Let's take a look at the stock market. These are the S&P 500 futures. We're gonna look at the daily, the weekly, and the trade of the day. Normally I start with the weekly, but let's just, let's just look at the daily here. Got this, got this chart up first, why not? We'll look at it first, doesn't really matter. We'll do them all. Daily chart. Um, make this nice and big. You can see yesterday, or I should say, this is today's candlestick right here, this one. This one. This little tiny red thing that's going on right there, that's just a new, the new uh, new candlestick starting for, for tomorrow. Because remember, this is futures, and they always start trading the night before, right? So anyway, this is, this is today's candlestick right here. You can see, um, you know, pretty decent range, right? This candlestick's got a lot of range. Well, not a lot, but decent range. 53, we'll call it. And um, look how it traded between these two lines, 43, 68 which is pretty much where it started, started uh, you know, uh, where yesterday I should say it left off. Started right there, 43.68, came all the way up, got above 44.11, and then, you know, retracing came back. And the other thing I want you to notice is this candlestick, you know, the, the, the top upper part of this wick is trading right between the 50-day simple moving average and the 24-day simple moving average, trading right in the middle of it. That's where the upper wick was. Got up there, kind of ran out of gas, pulled back. Okay, um, I think I, well, okay, uh, on the daily, let me let me find, I should probably put it on here. You know what, let's just do this. Let's do it. We're going to do it together, okay? We're going to do this together. We're going to put in another um, resistance point. I just have to um, identify it. So give me a moment here to find it. It's really these two candlesticks along with this one. Yeah, even these two are kind of in play here, but it's really these two, that one a little bit, and this one's kind of right in this area. It's not super well defined, but it's pretty close. We're gonna go with right about here, which puts us at about 44.70. Could get a little higher. The top of this one is 44.72. The top of that one is 44.70, we'll call it 78. These two are even higher, these are 44.76, this was 44.85. So somewhere kind of right in this area is, is support. I'm gonna just gonna draw the line. And we'll bring it way over here. There is support here. We'll put it at about 44. Um, 80 is okay. 80 is okay. It's probably a little higher than what it's gonna be, but it's okay to be a little too cautious. We'll put this, we'll put this at 80, right? So this is kind of a, This would be a resistance, I should say, not support. This would be a resistance. This approximately this is not, this this one's a little bit uh, more fuzzy. It's not quite as um, clear cut, this particular uh, resistance point, uh, just because of the way, um, let, me, let me duplicate this, uh, duplicate this. We'll put it right here. Okay, and we'll call this 44. 44.80 is pretty good. Might not be quite that high, but that's all right. All right, so now we have it in there, right? 44.80 is approximately where this kind of comes across the top of this candlestick. Is it really 44? Let me double check it. Yeah, it is. Okay, it's it's on top of this one. It's a little. It's on the top of that wick there. So there's enough going on here to why I think this this is a pretty decent resistance point. So between 44.11 and 44.80, that's that's a pretty pretty big spot. But we got the two simple moving averages in there that are, especially the 50, that aqua blue, light blue color, that's, that's usually pretty strong resistance too. So we'll keep an eye on that, which right now is about 44.37, we'll call it. Okay, that's this number up here. Now, now that we had kind of have some idea about where resistance would be, you know, kind of 4480s kind of I think the max. I'm not saying it's going to get that high, but it could. But let's take a look at some of these indicators. This is stochastic moment momentum index, and I don't think it's done. I don't think it's done. I think there's more in this. I think there's some more to go. Okay. And uh, I haven't got the data in yet tonight for the the universe data. 
and the certainty rate, but they'll, they'll come in. Uh, I'm doing this about 530-ish right now. This data doesn't come in until a little bit later on. So we'll see how that plays out. This will be in the nightly email. Um, and just looking at the MACD down here, this particular indicator crossing over right now. You know, I it's hard to say what this is gonna do. My instincts tell me it's getting, getting up here and right out of gas. It might get above it a little bit like this. The reason I say it is because this is so far, has to come from such a, a low level. It, it's really hard for it to do one of these big blast offs when it's this far down. It, I'm not saying it can't do it, but given the state of affairs in the market, high inflation, war in Israel, blah, 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 all this other stuff going on. Not that I'm trying to make light of the war in Israel. I think it's very serious, but, um, and all the corruption up there in DC with our favorite El Presidente um, and his band of criminal criminal buddies. Um, I just don't think the market's going to get way up here. I think it's going to kind of get up into here. It's, it's going to probably fizzle out the zero line, maybe a little above it. It, it might not even get to it. So that's kind of my take on, you know, the MACD is a little bit slower, right? A little bit slower reacting. I think it's kind of one of these deals, okay? And then and then we'll just see what it does, okay? But short term looks like to me that this, the, the shorter term kind of f fast reacting indicator like the SMI here, I think it's got a little more to go. It's got a little bit more to go here. So we could see this bounce some more. You know, there could be, there could be some days in here where you know, it just kind of tracks sideways. That's another thing it could do. Right now, I would say there's definitely a little bit more risk to go long, right? It, there wasn't much risk on this day back here and today. There wasn't like the risk was low. Long was good. Go for it. Make your money. Shove the money into the bank, right? But now the risk is a little bit higher, right? The risk is a little bit, eh, you got to be careful. I, for me, um, I think long is still okay, but um, I would keep those position sizes smaller and man, your risk management's got to be like right there, right? Like ready because this thing could turn because um, the market is very, very fidgety right now. All right. Uh, they'll just overall, I think there's a little bit more in this probably. And you know what? We'll find out with the universe and uh, certainty rate data tonight. If it's, if it's playing nice, right? If it's suggesting there's more long, then we'll, we'll talk about that, okay, in the nightly email. All right, let's look at the weekly. Because I'm kind of doing it backwards here today. That's all right. What's happening with the weekly? Let's get the weekly drawing set up here. Nice candlestick, right? Look at this weekly candlestick. It's at 119.5 range. Nice big green candlestick. Healthy. Now, what's the top of this candlestick right here? This top of this candlestick is 4514. That's a that's a long way up there. Okay. So on the weekly chart, that's it. That is your next resistance. Way up there at 4514, the top of that candlestick. That's quite a ways away. So, you know, I'm not saying it's gonna get that high, but just from a weekly perspective, that's where we're at. Now, a couple of things to take notice of here that the weekly chart's been trading above the 50 week moving average for quite a while, which is way down here at 4196. Okay, it is kind of at the moment anyway, finding a little bit of resistance up against this 24 week moving average, which is 43, we'll call it 4394. Okay, it's kind of running up against that. I don't think it's gonna hold. I think it's, it is gonna get above that a little bit. Um, we'll see what this does. We'll just see what this does. Is it going to do this? Um, long term, I still just think looking at the way this MACD is, I know it's trying to kind of, it's trying to do one of these things and kind of pinch down again and maybe go up. But I just, for the moment, this, this MACD still looks weak to me. Even if it gets a little bit like, uh, I think it's going to fail. I think this thing's going to fail as we go into the early part of 2024. Could even be a little bit sooner than that, but you can see this is very long term, slow moving kind of stuff, right? So once it rolls over, uh, like it has way up here in the nosebleed section of the MACD, because again, remember this is this was way up here, this was 138 when it rolled like the ad's peak. I just don't think I see that, I just don't see this rebounding again and getting really strong again. Once it made its move and rolled over, I think we're in for some decline for quite a while, probably. You know, there could be some bounces in here or whatever, but I just think overall, I think I see a decline for on the average out here, you know, 
whatever, maybe into March or April, something like this. All right. Keep an eye on these two uh, weekly uh, cycles, uh, October 29th and November 26th. Okay. All right. Let's look at the trade of the day. All right. So here we are on the five minute chart. I'm just going to keep the certainty rate in the universe on there for now. They don't really mean anything on a short term chart like this, the five minute. This, these are really more daily indicators, but I'm just going to leave them on there. Uh, because um, I use the same chart at, the, at, at late in the night uh, for the members. I just switch it to daily and send them out an email. Um, I mean, does it get any sweeter than this, guys and gals? I mean, look at this chart. <laughs> We're talking about the trade of the day. For those who have been watching my videos, mo you know, mostly it's my members. Um, but can, does it get any sweeter than this? I mean, look at this trade of the day. I mean, by now, for, for members who've been around, you know, and, and sticking with the membership, you, you already know what I, which, which one I'm going to pick out here, right? <laughs> I mean, just look at this thing. I mean, seriously. I mean, hello to the moon. To the moon. You know, this is 40, uh, let's see, not quite 40, uh, 30, 40, and more than 40 points. You know, because from, from this line up to here, uh, I'm sorry, up to there is 30 points, and this is 40 points, and you know, up here is about 47, 48 points. Again, you know, I'm a realistic trader. I know I'm not going to catch all that. All right, I might exit here and re. I, I might exit in this little consolidation phase and then re-enter for another 10, 15 points. Oh, excuse me. Overall, I see at least 30 points worth of profit in this run. Even if you're super conservative, it's 25, and that's just big money. Okay, that's just huge money. 25 points. That's the trade of the day right there. I mean, this trade just stood out. 8.35 this morning. Look at that. And, you know, the MACD was just crossing over, right? It already crossed over here a little bit, was making its way up. That's just golden. When I see stuff like that, and even though we're in a bear market, when I see that, I mean, that's, that's just golden. And we already had a good sense, you know, in the nightly emails to the members that, you know, I was kind of seeing that long, going long today was probably the right way to go. There was some data suggesting that. And look at this. So you have all that data, right? You read the email. You're thinking, okay, there's a little bit of a favor, favoritism leaning towards long. So you're, you know, you're, you're looking for those opportunities long, right? Because you know that from the nightly email. Then you see this pop up. And then you see the MACD in positive territory. And then one last little check of Rooney. This thing never even came down. Look at it. It couldn't even get down this very far. It got down halfway between the two red lines and it does a pop, you're in. I mean, you're just totally in right there. You're in. Boom. You just ride it. Right? That's uh, 10, 15 points at least, uh, even if you got in late right here. At least 15 points. And then I see another 10 in here. This is a little bit shakier up in here, but I see probably another 10 points. So I said, even if you were conserved today, it's 25 points worth of trading. So really, really sweet. That's the trade of the day. I don't even, really don't even have to look that much further. I mean, that's just like, that's it. That was the trade of the day. Today was just like a really easy day to trade. You make your bank. That's it. You don't get greedy. You move on. The next, You just keep knocking it out. You know, I had a member tell me today in the chat, I think it was on, yeah, one of the channels on the Discord server, they said that they really, I'm not going to say their exact words, but basically in a nutshell, they really appreciated the night, nightly email because it helped them make a great trade today. Right. Then last night's nightly email to the members was basically, I was basically told them, I think there's a little bit more into this, the, the, uh, the, the universe data, or the cert, I think I mentioned the certainty rate is suggesting there's a, uh, you know, a little bit of favoritism for going long. It was a very short, simple email and I attached the SP 500 chart to it. You know, not this one specifically because this is the five minute, but I always attach the daily. And the members said they really appreciated that basically because it helped them make a trade today probably is what happened and they made some bank. Okay. And they look at the emails every night. Members are making use of the email. I try to keep it simple. Here's an email. Here's a chart. Sometimes I'll annotate the charts, right? I might put some drawings on there and whatever. I might say something like this, a little bouncy bounce and, a, you know, because we deal with a lot of cycles. We deal with cycle analysis in my, in this service, which I won't dive too much into that right now, but so the member just really appreciated that. I try to keep things simple. You know, I don't always annotate 
and draw on the, the daily charts to the members because sometimes it's not clear and I don't want to steer members wrong, right? I try to give them my best opinion. Sometimes if it's not clear, I just don't say much. I just let the members look at the chart. They see the cycles. They can decide for themselves, okay? Of course, I encourage the members to watch the, the video like I'm running the video now. So again, you know, we'll, we'll see what tonight brings for us the data and I'll give my, my, uh, my small paragraph or a few sentences what I think tomorrow's is going to be. But for now, this is the trade of the day. Hope everybody really enjoyed the video. Um, if you want to become a member, it's only $7.99 a month. Okay. You get the streaming chart like you're seeing right here. A five minute, 15 minute, one hour. Um, you just heard about how I send out the nightly emails every night. Monday through Friday. I don't always do Friday nights, but you, you know it depends what's going on. But usually I send out emails every night of the week. And on the Discord channel, or I should say on the Discord server, these get us plus indicators that come in like this. These get sent as alerts over to the Discord server. But up, they get sent over and members get alerted on these, these um, uh, get us plus indicator, like the trade of the day right here. They got notified on the Discord server when this happened. So if they got their mobile phones or their mobile devices or their laptops or their desktop, whatever they're doing, if they have their notifications turned on, for that specific channel, this one's called the S&P, uh, I think it's called the S&P 500 channel. They get alerted, bing, bong, whatever, gives them an alert. They can go check out to see if they want to make a trade. And that's true. Uh, the streaming charts are just for the S&P 500, but we also send alerts for uh, gold, crude oil, top 30 stocks for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. Okay. Uh, there's a channel in there for daily trade, which sometimes we get a symbol or two that comes in for daily trades, but not always. But there's a channel for that as well. Okay, there's an email channel on there. So if you're a new member and you want the nightly email, just drop your email in the email only channel, the emails channel, and I'll make sure it gets picked up and then you get the nightly emails. Okay, it's a really great service, guys. I got seven dollars and ninety nine cents. I got I got I've had many members tell me they're making a hundred dollars a day. Um, and some are making as much as 300 and and I'm you know I don't ask them their account size because it's none of my business okay but I'm pretty sure that we're talking small retail accounts here right then they're making 100 to 300 dollars a day and I'm sure some days are better than others but think about it seven dollars and 99 cents I mean they, they're making profits that pay for the membership for the rest of their life and I honestly mean this that if you take your time and learn the service and you're not in a hurry I wouldn't even trade the first few weeks just learn how to use the service Pay attention to nightly emails. Watch the videos like, like this one. I think the service will pay for itself just in the trades you make, okay? That's my honest opinion. Okay, that's it for now, guys and gals. Happy trading, everybody. God bless everybody. Talk to you all real soon again next time.